if I have this drink, you're really happy. To, uh, you're really open to join. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'll be able to. That. <laughs> yeah. I will. I will. Uh, I'll keep you to that. Eh? I'm going to keep you to yeah. that. All righty, Jerry. <laughs> hey, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for being here and making the time and everything. I'm so excited to chat to you. And I read that you were discovered, which is every actor's dream, at 15 uh, by your agent and then sort of got into the industry. So was that, did, did you always, as a youngster, know that you wanted to be uh, in the creative field or was that the defining moment that made you say, yes, I want to be an actor, director, filmmaker? No, actually, I was quite... Um, I was pretty nerdy and quite um, good in school. I always had the feeling I need to be good to, to um, yeah, build a safety net in the future. Mm. And then art came along and I was like, my whole high school time like torn apart between the arts and doing something that where you can earn money or something yeah. that is more intellectual. So I was always uh, torn apart between the creative and the, um, yeah, the more scientific. Yeah. And I feel directing now combines it. Yeah. Actually, I feel like it's, I could, directing is really at the center between arts and economics, arts and science, arts and organizations. So on the one hand, it's the creativity. And on the other hand, you have like a whole team. You have a lot of people mm -hmm. you have to get into certain topics, especially with us, artificial intelligence or the future of Germany. And so now, now I finally feel like it's combining, but for a long time, I was like kind of torn apart. And my agent actually was also a student 15 years before me at the same high school. And he was oh, like cool. a casting, they were looking for a young black character. And so he was casting and asked everyone. And then, yeah, I auditioned, I didn't get the role, but he was like, I love you. And when you're 18, please, Join me in the agency. And oh no way! Yeah, that's amazing. It's more oh. like family. Oh, that's so cool. That's such a that's such a nice story, you know. And I, I find that so interesting that you say direct directing is a mix of the two, because you're right. And and working on different films with different genres and different themes, you're constantly learning different industries all the time. I mean, you're having to learn, you know, about artificial intelligence and things like that, which you would never normally do in any other traditional job, you know. Um, so, yes. that, yeah, that's really cool. It's really, really cool to hear. Um, you then went on to uh, train, you know, go, go to school for directing uh, and then went into production. So I'm, I'm curious as to why that transition from acting initially to directing? And do you think that school training is a necessary step for filmmakers? Or do you think, I mean, was it was it worth it for you? Was it an important part of your process? That's uh, many questions. Sorry, <laughs> I tend to do that. <laughs> no, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> yesterday, there's like one, motivational speaker that I really look up to. She's called Lisa Nichols. And yesterday mm. she had a talk where it was about purpose. So someone asked, yeah. how do I fulfill my purpose in life? And she said, which I thought is amazing. She said, first of all, you have more than one purpose in life. This is something we all need to accept that there's more than one purpose that you have in life because we're still all searching for the one purpose and this one one transition but but also taking care of your children for 18 years or mm -hmm. building this brand or helping someone can be one purpose and when it's done it's to the next and this really resonated to me because that that was the same with acting for a long time it was my biggest dream to become an actor and um, to go to an acting school i went to an acting school i also was thrown out of it for the, after the first year then i got to another acting school mm -hmm. i got my first film in the competition of the berlinale but then i didn't get the two main roles that i really would have loved to do so it was like a up and go how all the artistic journeys are but mm -hmm. After some time, I think it was about 2015, I felt like it's not enough. Yeah. Um, and so don't, don't discredit any actor because it's an amazing profession and there are people who want to do this for their whole life. But I mm -hmm. felt like there's something else I need to give 
and especially when we talk about um, the lack of diversity and racism, I was offered mm -hmm. a lot of um, problematic characters. A lot of them, especially in Germany, we have such a lack of diversity that most of them were drug dealers or their German was limited. They had a refugee um, history. So I, most of the time I declined these characters and always wanted to have like three dimensional living characters where I don't don't communicate the same story of the black aggressive violent criminal um, but still I only you can only do so much when you are getting roles and it's such a privilege to get roles offered but still I only can do yes or no and then I can try to make the most human um, the most human um, journey of this character in a movie but the story is set and sometimes mm. I think also through this frustration I had the feeling I want to tell my own stories and I want to tell other stories and I think there's so many stories especially in the German speaking countries that are not told and yeah suddenly I mean there was like a, a very personal um, loss that I was suffering from but this also reminded me of life is short um, yeah. life life can be short and you should really decide on what you want to do in this one lifetime when mm. you have one chance what do you want to do and yeah i felt the purpose to 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 do this and i was very insecure and if i can do it especially when you come from acting you always ask yourself am i'm just am i'm really a director or am i'm just a actor who has not a lot of um um, who is not who's not fulfilled in this and yeah mm -hmm. so the last years I figured out I really like telling stories and mm -hmm. yeah then I went to the US and then I went back to Germany and I had the feeling at the moment I need to tell stories from here or from from the German-speaking country but that's well, well I mean that's you're answer yeah yeah that, that, that's amazing <laughs> that answers I mean I did ask you like 10 10 questions in one but um uh, I love that I love that I love the notion of having more than one purpose because um, one can get sometimes very bogged down on trying to go after the one thing. Um, and sometimes if you just look the other way, there might be something waiting for you here that maybe you haven't discovered yet. So I, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. It's also the narrative that we always, um, like especially in the arts, you have this one purpose and you yeah. need to have started with from six years old and you went through, had the camera of your dad, the eight millimeter camera, and then you yeah. uh, go out and do this for the last 40 years and 30 of them, no one believed in you. And then in the last five years, you become successful. That's the narrative that we always yeah. have, but it's not true for a lot of people and a lot of arts who, um, it doesn't mean that you have only this one goal it means like that the whole life that you're pursuing and the people you touch and the people you connect mm -hmm. with is your purpose and if this leads to one job it's great if this leads to three professions or a shift at 40 ages and you're like okay i have been this for 30 years but now i feel like i need to go into mm -hmm. social work this is also this is not a break or a, this is not a you have not been lazy on fulfilling your one dream you can you can life is fluid and it's changing and yeah. I appreciate that yeah I suppose also being okay with it being fluid you know accepting that um because that's yes. a big part of any transition is 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 being okay that it may go a different direction uh, yes and yeah especially I feel for women in our society there's just shift after you take so much time if you have a child and this whole burden of if you take it on a, mm. but then you have 18 years on giving everything to this child and most most mothers after that have like a crisis of who have i been before and mm. who do i want to be now after taking care of of one um, human being i don't know why this topic is coming up now well, i don't I know either like, but i love so it <laughs> <laughs> we, we treat different genders in a very different way yeah so, so. yeah yeah congratulations on i am what what an interesting film it completely it completely sucked me in from the beginning because i was like what is happening um yay for female leads and then characters and uh i just think you've sh it's been shot beautifully and edited beautifully and sound it just it's i really enjoyed the experience so thank you for putting that out there into the world and, and creating something very different very unique um which i really so. enjoyed watching so thank you what what was it about this this storyline that i guess captured your attention and 
uh, did you jump on you know later on in the process as a director or were you part of it from the beginning we had a we have a, a group of four like a collective with the screenwriter the producer and the uh, director of photography oh, cool. um it's Lena Katarina Krause who's the DP um Stella Flicker who's the producer and Florence Hoon who's the author and all of us four have created another movie where it was about gender identity and a young boy who couldn't express himself in his toxic masculine um, family. Mm. And we fell in love with the story first and then with each other. And then we decided to do this movie, which was supposed to be our thesis movie, which was um, a total different story, um, which we all loved. And then the pandemic came and we mm. had elderly people, we had club scenes, we had kind of eight main characters and so very quickly we were like we are not going to shoot this movie um and it really hurts the story if we lower it uh, to mm. something else so let's find a new story that will be able to be shot in a pandemic so we had the biggest mm. crisis because we knew production will start in three months we don't have a story we don't know what's going on what are we doing <laughs> and then immediately i mean my it was clear that we only want to have a very small ensemble and a very limited amount of uh, locations because I was like, let's have one main location and two actors, actresses, because this is the best where we can secure whatever happens to the pandemic, mm. that we can actually shoot it. Uh, we don't risk too many lives. It is possible. So let's build a story around that, which is not the best case to build a story when you have like the location and the limited amount of people. But as I think sometimes limits increase creativity as yeah. Stim, uh, Kim Stinson said, it. this is like one of my favorite quotes, sometimes the limitations help you. Mm. Yes. And as a group, it was like, really, we share a lot of the same values. And my producer was like women and I was like black. And so it was like yes. very early. We were like, we need to have two black women because this is the most important constellation. If we want to, we wanted to, it's a privilege to shoot something while a pandemic. So let's do something that matters to us. And black female women are not portrayed at all in, in Germany. They don't have the leads. They don't have complex characters. They are often very sexualized. And so we were like, that's it. And uh, um, we have androids in the whole world. I'm a science fiction nerd and so is the author. And I love so many works like Blade Runner and Star Wars and mm. Ex Machina and whatever, but the lead is always white and mostly it's male. And so I was like, why do we don't have black female androids in the world? Yeah. And this um, really, really resonated to all of us. And then we looked about what could her purpose be? Uh, what is the story that we want to tell? And then the author did magic and um, yeah, went away for like two or three weeks and came up with kind of this story, which we all loved and did a lot of research before. And then it was like some shifting. But hmm. yeah, it was like this. We didn't have anything. And what is the most important story that we can tell? And I was like, let's just not be boring. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'd, I'd love to know about um, what, what you're like as a director on set with your actors. So this is a, a twofold question. I'm letting you know in advance. <laughs> so the, the first <laughs> the, the first one is um, how do you as a director manage to bring out those really truthful performances from your actors? And then what are, what are you like on set? What kind of style um, do you have in terms of managing your team? when when you're actually on set and in production so such a great question also to Thank reflect you. yourself i think i'm still on the journey of figuring out myself although sure. everyone else can tell you that there's probably a specific style but i i'm still figuring out this process because i think it's so important um the the creative process, especially between the director and the actor or actresses. Me coming from acting, I feel like I have the privilege to know what an actor needs or an actress, which I feel not every director is, for, for a lot of directors, it's like a mysterium. It's like, how does acting work? And what do you need? And how do I talk to you? And what helps you and what doesn't? So also, especially in film school, I also in Los Angeles, I did all the auditions for my um, for the, I was the casting agent for the student films of my other colleagues and they were all like 
need of help of like how does an actor work and i was like it's a human being <laughs> just <laughs> just interact like a human being so um i feel to me the most important really the most important energy that i try to create is trust mm. i think actors are very vulnerable as i know from myself that you always have to share something intimate you're always insecure if you're doing this you have to be kind of insecure because you're always on the edge of searching and um, is this is this right am i'm doing it am i'm feeling it do i feel too much who is there there's so much going on in the film set always you always have to work very fast you always have changes and so building a trust um, energy i think is to me the most important where an actor and actress can work I listen to other actors, so I, I try to see what the actor or actress needs because it's a range of people that don't always work the same. So I'm always yeah. like, what do you need? Um, do you feel okay? Um, do you want to do this again um, in this? Um, yeah, I think this trust net, for me, casting is very important. I've been casting yeah. agent Lisa Stutzky and we really intensify the casting very much because it's for me 60% of, of the work that the character and the actor um, organically merge and that also me and the actor or actress, not everyone works best to each other. So I think it's important mm -hmm. that we work together. So we intensify this casting process and especially here, no one believed that, that we have, that we will find these great black like, actresses. A lot of people read the script and were like, it's an amazing script, but how are you going to find them in Germany? And, even I, as a black actor, was kind of insecure of, do we find them? Are they there? But they have to be there. We, we had 160 audition tapes of amazing wow. actresses that are not seen at the moment in Germany because they don't get the leads. So mm. um, yeah, and I, had, I was privileged to have a great casting agent who, who went through this with me. Um, yeah, that's the acting trust thing. And on the other hand, I feel like I'm a very high energetic, um, quirky Duracell person so I'm always like bah, 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 bah. I'm very fast I'm very energetic and very, so on the one hand I try to have this calm and really yeah. relaxed <laughs> and new for actresses on the other hand I'm always like I'm very on a very high level of energy. Um, we've all heard of director's vision and I, I find this really interesting how a director can see see a shot see a scene after reading a script and just know what it's going to look like in in your mind but then the writer also has an idea of what they see you know because it's it's come from from their imagination so how does a writer and director align their vision in particular in terms of the overall look and feel of the production talk talk and talk <laughs> it's like, I think it's a lot of a lot of Okay. Always. Um, a vision is for me nothing that is um, cemented in, in stone mm. and I think it shouldn't be although sometimes it feels like it so there's something you're drawn to which is an energy a picture a moment something um, and you feel like it has to be exactly that way but still it's moving and changing the whole time because you're creating and recreating so you're writing something then you create pictures then there comes the casting so you arrange you you kind of morph the pictures because of course you didn't have this actress in mind but you had like someone who looks kind of it in mind already there you, you're changing it there comes the costume there comes the set design you find a location especially here we had a location of course the script has to be altered because it was written for a very particular location in a student film you can't build this location we were not able to to finance this so you always have to have to merge it a bit and so i feel like a vision is something that's always changing and still stays the same and this is a lot of communication, but especially with me and the author, we we found a way to um, influence each other and adapt. I tried to get as much as the pictures and paintings that is important to him, because I and then I, I kind of question then and look around it. But the more specific his picture is, it's 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 inspiration. It's great when mm -hmm. he says, "I see this slow dolly shot where we are slowly." going on it it's great because it's already something that he sees very quickly and then i can um 
see if this re works for me or if I have the same vision, see if this overlays, if it influences each other, but it's a lot of, a lot of communication. And most of the time, I mean, sometimes you only on set see that you saw something different or that someone had a different mm. vision or in the edit or something. Sure, but the director is the one who has the creative decision at the end. And so I have to know that every everything I put out there, I really stand behind it and I know why. And mm. um, I'm glad that like in 99% of this, the vision fits um, the other departments or something, but it's communication. Mm. Yeah what Just what are sense. yeah no that i mean that totally makes sense it's also you know we know that this is a very collaborative process so so that's what it is right it's talk 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 it's really just working as a team because that's yes. at the end of the day everyone on set wants to make the best production possible uh, that's the goal to make the best yes. film so yeah it's it's communication that's huge everyone is so different i mean as you say every every director is different every author is different every producer is different and you have to find find the relationship that fits my producer for example we really have this low hierarchy attitude that we want to respect everyone and said and everyone should mm -hmm. feel open to talk about things and i really i really can only work on it trustworthy um, environment others can for me it really creates um creates more hurt and more like it's more frustrating if i don't feel there's like an environment of, of mm. trust if I, like people are talking around each other and people are annoyed or something for some this creates energy for me this is like a toxic environment and i mm. try to avoid it and so when anything comes up i try to take the time to have time for emotional issues because everyone tries to do his or her best job. And if someone feels like this is not appreciated, you need to address it. And you need mm. to say like, what is what is it? And often people come up with, I, I had one hour less time or this was not communicated or whatever. And then you can say, sorry, let's change it for the future, something like this. So I think this is really important to have an environment where, where people can talk. And I think we are behind the days of uh, toxic masculinity of the mm. Me Too oh, movement yeah. of our struggle that really create an environment of, of fear. I think this is, we, we are now at a time where we feel like art doesn't have to be created in, in a place of fear. Mm. We can create the good and maybe even better art if people feel fulfilled because they have the chance to bring everything they are able to into it. Mm. Isn't that I get emotional a, when I talk about it. Like, no, but it's really it's, so, like, it's so important, you know. It's isn't isn't that amazing that we can now create an environment where we all feel safe and, um, you know, obviously things are still a work in progress, but it's it's pretty amazing to know that you're going to go onto set and you're going to feel safe and you have a voice. And um, even with Corona and this year that all of us have been through, it's kind of changed things a bit. People are are more open to each other. And uh, it's really just, there's been a massive shift in the last few years. And I think it's incredible, you know. Are there certain qualities that make a film more interesting to you that you perhaps try to incorporate in your own work? I think I'm, I'm my love for cinema and now TV and all forms of uh, motion, mo motion pictures is very diverse. So I love a lot of different genres and a lot of different styles. So it's hard to um, really have like overall qualities mm. um, that are not like good. <laughs> what yeah. I really like is if something's good. So we should ask the question of what makes a good movie good. And I think precision if someone's if there's a vision if i feel like someone really needed to tell this story this is not a quality that you can just break down or take into it but i think you feel it as an audience if there's like a precision and the precision means that someone thought about every different element of shading of colors of costume of how someone's walking how you're going to portray this with a camera with the lighting it's an art form so i'm really drawn to something that's um that's yeah, where, where the art is taken seriously. Um, I think this really, and then the genre is really, it doesn't, it, it, it can tell a story everywhere. It just mm. has to be, it has to be, it has to be, it has to bring something. Yeah. And what I'm in the last years more and more drawn to 
is not only that the movie is good, that it brings something good to the world. Mm. So there can be movies that are amazing, but I feel like how this woman or women are portrayed in this movie is so problematic that I can't like it anymore. Or you rewatch something and you figure out this this really comes from a very problematic and racist standpoint. So I, I, I more and more tend to watch through this lens of does it bring something good to the world? And then I also can overlook that it's not the best if I feel like there's something that is great for the world. I think, yeah, I think the purpose of the art is for me nowadays more important than the technical correctness. Yeah, so the message, the overall message. Uh, yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, and, and how people are portrayed and how it is seen. I mean, when we talk about diversity and equality and stuff, it doesn't, it, it doesn't help a movie if all the characters are black, if how they are portrayed still leads to a, a mm. racist narrative. So it's not only about the factors or the checklist, which mm -hmm. like nowadays we have, which is amazing, like diversity checklist. It's about how the people are portrayed and how you see these stories. And this obviously leads to the um, the perception of the director or the direct the director who, um, yeah, what he or she wants to tell with the story. Mm -hmm. This is a tough industry and being a creative yourself, we've all experienced it lots of ups and downs no's rejection self doubt insecurities i mean you've mentioned it earlier how how have you dealt with those moments in your life and how do you self motivate to keep striving forward i i i'm a strong believer of everything that happens happens for a reason mm -hmm. and that you draw things to you that happen to you and not to you for you um, I think this is a mental attitude. Um, you can decline it, and of course, not not everyone does it. But really, it helps me to incorporate everything that happens to me and try to learn from it and see why did this not why did this happen, but what can I take out of it? What mm. what is really the thing that I can take out of it? Um, there have been very painful experiences, like getting thrown out of the acting school. That was for me the acting school and the academy i really wanted to go and then they decided that i shouldn't be on this school anymore this was a really painful experience but it led to it led to such a freedom at the end because i don't trust institutions anymore to be only in alignment with myself i always check if my purpose aligns with the institution which especially with art schools but also later in, in life sometimes you 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 lower your own purpose because of a, of an institution so i feel like if it, it, i'm the institution so it's my life and does this fit to me does this project fit to me so you change so of course at the end you can um, um at the end, you know what happened to you and why why it happened to you. And yeah. yes, yeah, this you is can how connect, I try. connect the dots, you know. Totally. And I think what is really important, and this is work that I'm still struggling with and, and have this every every time and always, it's like finding purpose in the things you do really helps. And you really need to focus on that this is a purpose for you in your life and why you want to do it and what's the greater reason for society and for others mm. um, not only a selfish reason or the money or a job i think this is, really helps me to to know that everything i'm doing has a has a higher purpose this helps to not get bitter or frustrated or angry on someone else because i decide myself mm. um, what do you want audiences to take away from i am I think the audiences have to decide themselves what they think about it. Um, I I strongly believe that we have to um, think about and reflect our values uh, when it comes to artificial intelligence and robot lives. So already we have Ziri, we have Alexia, already we have like complex mm -hmm. speaking um, AIs and this is just building up and I think there is a very possible future and where AI is able to feel and then we have to have to see if how much dignity we give these beings 
when we talk about talk about it. So I think this is like the philosophical play. But overall, it's um, science fiction, it's horror. It's I hope people just first of all get entertained because I think through mm. the entertainment you can deliver other other um, other messages. I think like the connection between these two beings. I hope it's it's if anything like interesting. Um, maybe touching, maybe entertaining. Yes. Yeah. What advice do you have for up and coming directors who are trying to break out into the industry and maybe, you know, they they haven't really done much yet, but they're, they're trying to get their foot in the door? It's so personal. Every, 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 every career path is so personal. And so mm. I don't know if there's like an overall thing, but I think it's, trust your your instincts i think this is something that i'm still figuring out myself but i think everyone has instincts and it's very important especially in the arts that you that you trust your instincts because sometimes in society we we get led away from from this inner gut feeling and you can call it spirituality you can call it the sex sixth sense whatever you follow but i feel like um you kind of know um this is my attitude to life. You kind of know if this works or not, if this is for you, if this should be pursued. You kind of know. And if you don't know, there's like other ways of talking to a lot of people that you trust. I think having like, a, it's it's so important to have rock bottom relationships that really keep you grounded to, to have like a life where you, where you, yeah. I think it's important to have like a healthy, emotional healthy lifestyle to pursue something where you are in charge of other people especially for directing mm -hmm. you're in charge of other people if it's yeah. actors or actresses um so the more sane you are the more safe of an environment you can you can give to others so i think being sane should be a goal um, in any position <laughs> of power <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. love that. <laughs> I love that. I really love that. That's great. <laughs> um, if if you could break the ice, meaning have a drink with anyone, past or present, who would it be and why? Oprah Winfrey. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, I think what she's done for um, for so many communities, but especially how she's interviewing others and you're doing such a great job thank you <laughs> Oprah really touched touches me every time and how respectful she is asking but still going to the point and being truthful asking really the, the important questions i think it's amazing and what she's doing with all of her yeah all of her life i think is really mm. admirable so if I ever would have this opportunity, I would be more than humble. Oh, I'd love to meet Oprah as well. I'd love to. It's on my, my bucket list of people that I'd love to meet. She's also she's also high up there. Thank you so much. This this was so lovely. You have such a wonderful energy about you. Um, I, I talk to so many people, you know, on, on the show, and it's just really nice when you get someone who's just got such a nice energy. So thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that and being so open and just willing to share. This was really lovely. Thank you so much for all the kind words and appreciation. No it's problem. been a lovely interview. Oh, Thank yay. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Bye. bye, bye. bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more inspirational videos just like this, then don't forget to subscribe, which you can do by clicking right over here. Also, leave us a comment in the section below and tell us who you guys would like us to break the ice with next. 